Okay. Who it was. Okay. I know it wasn't Mark Zinzo because it had a name on it. And I really couldn't read. It was really long. Um, and I never heard of it before. Okay. And did you receive your uh, my email right about the the rituals? Yes. The, did you do a ritual during the webinar? Uh, not the uh, like which webinar? Like the one uh, on yours or on mine? Yours or mine? Okay, not yeah. yours. You uh, cut your hand and showed the blood or something. Yeah, that, that that one I do remember. That was back in Austin. That was only a part of it. It's called blood offering. Oh, so what is it for? Because they were Draco. They, uh, oh, they, I got a I got several people calling me about it. You know that Draco. They uh, they require a lot of life force in order to be channeled, right? Okay. Like, well, I didn't, if, well, if you were, I can, to, if you were to buy, I can channel the um, I can channel Dracos that are in spirit very easily. But uh, these these guys are uh, royals. They uh, eat a lot. And they eat a lot. A lot of energy. Okay. So yeah, because they were freaking out, they thought they you were cursing people. It is not a curse. You will uh, you will know that blood offerings originally are not a curse. Okay, At the so end. they were just freaked out about it, and they, I got a bunch of people saying, oh, well, what's he doing? We don't know. Oh. So, um, yeah, that sort of freaked them out. I, I was, it's almost like a, uh, it's a lot of different uh, symbolism in there. Either it means that I'm offering my uh, own parts of myself to uh, my ancestors, mm -hmm. Or it could mean that uh, I am offering my blood to you as a symbolism that I that we shall forever bonded. Oh, okay. Very cool. I just wanted to know that it wasn't anything spooky or anything. So, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very yeah. sacred. I don't ever because do I very. didn't notice it, of course. <laughs> And tonight um, I will do a fire offering uh, tonight where I'll be uh, like controlling the fire and uh, know how like uh, like it's going to burn. Uh, there's going to be a lot of burning offerings uh, tonight if you want oh. to come over. Okay. I'm, I am busy for the next four or five hours. Mm. What, what time is it? Uh, it's nine o'clock p.m. on your end, which is like Eastern time. Okay. Okay, if I can make it, I will. We'll see how long they go. <laughs> so, Andy, what are you going to burn? Uh, it was actually, uh, I uh, put in there, like, mushrooms. You know, like those uh, uh, psychedelic uh, mushrooms that I uh, got from my school. Okay. Uh, and, like, they're caught in the wild. And I take that with, like, uh, different leaves and uh, on top there I uh, take dragon's blood and uh, mix it with turmeric and uh, burn you know, all that along with uh, some offering of my own semen you know oh gosh oh uh, where do you get dragon's blood uh, there's a nearby store they uh, I crush it up into small uh, little uh, dust particles and then I can sprinkle it into uh, my offering and then I a lit up mash and let it burn it's something called drag dragon's blood. It is uh, uh, a sap. Oh, okay. Indonesia. It's a plant over there. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, so, Jim, is it okay? I guess, you know, it's uh, in this channel. I just don't know. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. a little bit alerted by semen and uh, psychedelic, but I, I don't know. It's uh, it's up to. It's a lot of uh, yeah. I know it's well, a little disturbing. I don't always tell people about it, but the reality is, is that when you're offering a body part of yourself to your ancestors, they they're most pleased with the fact that you are giving a part of you to them. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For Dracos, that's not too. That's not far from uh, normal. And uh, Draco population of the earth, there's a, I don't know if you know where they all are on the earth, but I'm I know they're different places. I know under England and 
there, uh, under England and France, there's a section under the earth there that they live. Yeah, Celtics. Huh? The Celtics. They worship the, uh, who was it? Cruel, uh, cruel Crutch. That's the... the yes, Cruel people. Crutch. Cruel and then the other place I know is under China and Japan. Yes. They're, they're called the China. Dragon Kings. They... Uh, and there's Nagas. They are the descendants of dragons. India. Oh, the Nagas, India. the snake people? The snake people uh, that used to, that created the Harappan culture. They are the ones that create the empires. They are the ones that uh, that are descendants, uh, the descendants of Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand. Those are all in descendants of Dracos. Okay. So I know the two, the, there's a very positive Draco population under England and France. I was told that the population under the under uh, China and Japan was more negative. Which area? You're talking about the northern area or the southern area? The southern area. Not the southern. Originally, they are the people that really wanted to bring civilization to people. They are the ones that, like, I know them because... I'm from there. Okay, so it's the northern ones that are more negative? The northern ones, they're more about conquest. Oh. Especially like Japan. Japan is a little exception. China, especially where Mongolia is. Yeah. England, there's a mixed bag. Like, uh, like the current, like the ones that migrated, uh, like some of the good ones I will list to you are uh, Cruel Crutch is one of them. Mm -hmm. Although he does require blood offerings. Uh, the Merovingians, they are, uh, they are reptilians. They are the descendants of... Yeah, they're reptilians. Merovingians. Oh, more about the Dracos, yeah. They're Egyptians, the Egyptian pharaohs. They are mm, descendants of them. Yeah. A lot of them. Okay. And there's more. There's a whole bag. And let me see here, not Iran on there. Are they, are they a lot of them still living under the earth or, or have uh, some of them yeah. taken off? I heard some of them have left the earth. Actually, like those are the big guys. The descendants of the big guys are still here. But and the really big ones are gone. There's 20 species, but only three uh, species still, uh, still existing to this day. And they're descendants of the Dracos. Okay. The great but, ones have left, but they're coming back. Oh, I know the big, big dragons are not here any longer. Yeah, they were here, let me see here, five, six million years ago. Yes. Well, anyway, but there's still uh, pockets under the earth of Dracos. Mm. <clears throat> so I knew that. At least two great big ones that I know of. Um. To be honest with you, they're, they're actually like, uh, they're the fathers of the Vietnamese and the Cambodians. Okay. The Southern uh, Chinese. Okay. Most of them are still there. Because, but the, the, the ones that look like Dracos still are under the earth. Yeah, Shambhala is one of them. Yeah. Okay. That gets, that catches me up, but that was uh, that was channeled to me where these uh, civilizations were, but because uh, I wouldn't, nobody really knows for sure. But even, um, yeah, even that here in Washington, me that they're under England and France and China and Japan, and the Indians are uh, Mongolia descendants uh, like uh, Hopi Indians are. They, they're they're definitely descendants of Dracos. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Incans are. The Incans that live in South America and the ones that live here in Washington, a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting. Very interesting. Very cool. Uh, but I know there's more than that living under the earth, but those were two big, of the, uh, big areas that they're under. So, anyway. And uh, um, I would like to... Uh, to do something with, with, without your presence. It's not because of the secret, just because you, you, your drug energy overwhelms me. I just am relaxed. Yeah, I know. So uh, let's finish with you first, and then I would ask you 
to, to go because I, I apologize just just too yeah, much of uh, on the progress of like writing the yeah. uh, wiki I personally have been going through school work so I haven't uh, got a chance to uh, write through all of them but I'm mm, I'm still posting up videos and I'm still trying to uh, remember a lot of like the civilization like how do I write it in such a way that people can be able to see it more we're we're less about like uh giving like a wiki page my parents are uh like we're more of like uh writing a whole like a tale of uh the reptilian race like you know how the mahabharata works no that's that's the type of work that we created uh -huh. no your parents do they know that you that about the, their draco uh ancestry and stuff yes like the whole bloodline knows your whole bloodline knows it yes everything wow, that, very cool. that is like, wild they're the royals remember they're the kings uh, of uh, all creation so they remember uh, uh, their bloodline they remember a lot of people so your your mother and father in on earth also are part of that so my mother especially she's actually a vietnamese royal Oh, okay. He's part of the Nguyen family. We used to own an empire in Vietnam. Wow. Interesting. The Lai family are the ones behind the order. They organized to, uh, to kick out the French. And, like they, they caused violence and the revolution against them. And they're the ones behind everything. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's do your part. What, what part are you doing? I am currently working on uh, writing almost like Instead of trying a wiki page, because I think people won't uh, actually, uh, if I tried it, uh, uh, you can try uh, with wiki pages with other races, but definitely not reptilians. Like, we experience things a lot of times. We're very telepathic. So if you, if we were to tell it to you, like, as though you're mm, talking on a wiki page, no one seems to understand anything. They'll misunderstand us. Okay, because you have to transfer it telepathically pretty much and we also draw pictures we write uh, uh we write in our own uh, language we tell tales oh yeah that's okay. how we experience get the person uh, who reading it to experience what we are seeing oh wonderful can you write a tale and i will just use that that no uh, they say they can do they are Perfect. very good uh, uh storytellers Perfect. Yeah. A story will, will work. A tale, a story would work. Okay, I'm very, I'm pretty telepathic too. I sense that your energy is pretty positive most of the time. Very intimate. But that, but that there is negative parts of the past that come through. Correct. We have a um, long and, history. Yes, and when they come through, I, I will shudder. Did you ever notice that? I see that a lot with everyone in any, uh, no matter if it's you or anyone else, they say they already know. All right, but um, only when the negative parts come through, but when the positive parts are coming through, I don't, it doesn't bother me. But when the negative parts come through, they're very vivid, they're very strong. So, um, but that's something you can't help because it's just part of the lineage. Part of what's coming through is the story. Part There's of the story. histories all the time. What? Uh, we uh, they say that there is no such thing as negativity or positivity. Right. They say that there is what we call sickness or health. Okay. A healthy man sometimes will have sickness around there, and sometimes people are going to pick it up. They say yeah. that. Don't judge a man just by uh, that one little sickness. Just remember that sometimes every man has uh, his own anger. That is some well, of course, yes. Well, I wasn't judging. They, uh, like, because everything is available to them, anything can happen. Yes. See, I wasn't judging it. I was just pointing it out. Oh, yeah. It's okay. But they, can, they understand. They don't get Well, mad. they know that they know who I am. They know who I am, so it's all right. That's why I'm gonna like if you uh, when they say to you that, it, it, like when they wrote a message to people that only the brave shall come to us. 
that means like they say that you got to, uh, uh, that's like they're giving you a sign of who they are, that you're, you got to like learn to uh, know that this is a new energy that you're receiving here because they're very aware that not many people are ready for this. I'm not afraid of them. Not at all. That's good because they say that they want someone to uh, understand them and know them. Well, Not they do know. they actually, I think they pretty much know me to some extent. I, they know I'm not afraid of them. Mm. And I'm not a, I'm not, and I don't judge them at all. And yes, I believe that you sense that they're here with me too. Yes, uh, that's why, that's who I'm talking to, mm. basically. And um, th yeah, there's no fear, there's no... Mm. No uh, judgment at all. It's all, it, it is what it is. We live and let live. We move forward together. If we can work together, that's great. If they decide, you know, if we decide not to work together, that's great. But I think that everything's all right. Yes, they say that time uh, can tell. Yeah, so, but your energy is di well very different. Very, and a lot of people are not ready for it. So be be cautious, be careful with that that you don't that you use it your energy when it's the most effective. They understand yeah. that. Yeah, they do. That's why sometimes there there is a reason why um, we they say that they want me to practice yeah. Buddhism for a reason. Wonderful. We have rejected the Buddha long ago. Yeah, so what in the webinars, use your energy properly. I'm just telling them that because I want them to be accepted. I, and you understand that. I love it. But um, so just that's all I have to say because my people that are with me say they understand who you are and what's going on. They just want you to be careful not to frighten people away from you. So you, they want you to ex people to accept you. Yeah, the only thing that will uh, make my ancestor angry is facades, they say. What's that? Okay. That means like if people are, uh, if they uh, are not honest, right. the Dracos will figure it out. They, oh. will, uh, they will sense it and they will, uh, they will play you. Oh yeah, they, I'm very direct. Like you, That's they respected you, but there are some people who are facade and they will smell that. Yes, they respect me, I know that because we are, we've communicated, so that's cool. I wouldn't be able to interpret them if they didn't allow it. <laughs> And All right, let's, uh, let's move, move to the next topic. It's nice to have that diplomacy, but, you know, we already are half an hour into the pro process. Okay. Well, we needed to get established. No, 24 yeah, minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, Andy, do you mind that part to be published? Yep, I'm working on it. I know that... No, no, no. Like... This part which I recorded just now, 24 minutes of your conversation, do you mind it published? That's fine. All right. Do you mind if I announce here that we have a separate separate channels, right? Do you mind? Yes. You don't mind, right? I don't mind. All right. In fact, I personally always uh, like doing my own thing. <laughs> right. I, so I, so I, basically, uh, who, for those who, who listen, uh, Andy and I, we discussed over email and now in person that, uh, you know, we support him. He is a good channeler, but we want to keep Hukula separate from his draconian channel and we'd give him support we allow him we invite him to give his announcements on our um uh, sure a uh, facebook uh Hukula group but uh, his channel would be separate so we are not basically responsible for the draconian topic which uh. which is uh, presented there uh i have also kind of have experienced draconian energy i have that somewhere in my past and then some my some of my um, spiritual uh, connections. So it's not very foreign to me, but it's my choice to keep draconian topic low about maybe two, three percent of of me and two, three percent of Hukula. I don't want it to dominate because if you let it, it will dominate the whole thing. So that's why I want to keep it separate. But I respect it and I respect 
especially the value of the information. We need the information anyway. We need that communication line, diplomatic communication line between the humanity and draconians open. So it's wonderful that Andy provides that. So we welcome that. Okay. What do we want to do now? Uh, I would ask Andy to leave and we'll continue uh, uh, on, uh, on the next channel. I just want to have a, a more relaxed atmosphere. But Andy, thank you very much for your energy. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, hey, Pete. Hey. Hey, um, how are you doing? Like I, like I said, I've been dig doing some digging in the sense. Uh -huh. and journalizing a bit and what i found was is that over the years that there has been encounters by people that aren't in hukalo but they are based on how you would say how you would say like they're that they don't know it but they actually had made such encounters and some of those encounters were on a rare occasion or some occasions are documented on t television for example and because of that, I was wondering to see it, like to figure out, that's why I'm here because I'm wanting to figure out a bit of that and see, to see, to uncover that bit. Are uh, you talking those, about which encounters, which encounters? Some encounters that were naturally how people, the whole masses know about like ETs or greys type of things. Like the whole, they say like with the whole ball, the big, black eyes and stuff to the interactions with the hybrid children and how they react to them okay is it related to the book right yes it's totally related to the book and so what do you want add, what do you want it's, to be included in the book i understand you want to bring some some topic up right yes, you want I'm, to include I'm some somebody who gathers all the topics and looks scour scouts all over the place and and brings the topics here at this moment for keep to, to look at. Okay. Um, Such as the one that you were referring to, the one that was in, that I showed you the, I sent you an email on the videos, like one of a video that was named by the, by the Pleiadians on okay. it. That's one of those topics I sent, one of those documents I sent you. The other uh -huh. topic that I know about, the second topic was the 1997 Britain inter, that Brit in Britain, that there was a inter, which you would call a disturbance on the on the on the newscast, mm -hmm. and instead of and I'm pretty sure it's like I remember that yeah, mm -hmm. where Brillion from Ashtar Galactic Command, the representative came in and 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 showed himself to showed himself with the ashtar galactic command with got the, it uh, can you send me again because i lost the previous one uh, can you send me both of these again i will look at them again basically sure. i cannot cover the stuff which i don't know i i have sufficient amount of information like first hand through, through jim and zakari so i focus on stuff which i do know and if it is something which I um, don't know, I might drop it because you can't really cover in one book everything. So that's my point. But uh, if it is something which feels important, I will include it. The one that uh, I would suggest is the one that's the 1997 mm -hmm. uh, uh, interfere inter come from the from the Hashtar Galactic Command. I understand. Basically, the point of the book is that. I'm not to prove anything to anyone. I'm yeah, exactly. just just to tell the story, the the summary of how I see it, and um, it's not about argument. But if it is something which I like, I would include it. It's so I will pick of, and choose stuff. It's more of hoping that it could be like a document type of thing, like a part of like how you, people would look at a textbook and they sometimes have a bit of history in a sense. Yeah, I always want to look uh, back. It's it's a sense. different concept. I I'm not oh, writing okay. that. I'm I'm not qualified for that. Basically, it's uh, there is tons of other writers like Mars and Dolan, and many others who are very good in that. I I'm sort of, I forget the details. I I see the big picture, but I forget the details. That's why I'm not good in providing the documentaries. It's just boring to me. I can give a summary, but if it is something which is dear to me, I will include. Hey James, now I was yes. going to ask you, James. 
Um, do you have any information from Ashtar Galactic Command uh, referring to the 1997 incident? I can see? see if they have any, but I I didn't. They didn't say anything personally to me, but I know what you're, which incident you're talking about. Yeah. That is a very interesting, that's an interesting thing. I like that. It's so interesting that even some skeptics, so to speak, that they just go into that and their minds boggle with that idea. Like All right, let's move on degree. to the channeling. Um, I so would like to, to speak to the, to all right. Okay, okay cool. Uh, let's speak about, uh, let's speak to the, B the Blue Sphere Alliance. Um, whoever wants to speak, we, we have the questions about the past, distant past, the fall of the humanity, like how, when it happened, like how many million or thousands of years ago. I uh, would like to speak about the future and about the um, dimensions and planets and ascension, that kind of thing. Who so I, I, I have studied the information by Asher, Asherayana Diane, and I would like their comments on this information because it's just too much for me. I need some more clarifications. Okay, who did you talk to before? Didn't you talk to them? Yes, we, we spoke to a triangular being called Golden Radiant, and oh. uh, it was with um, Elena, Elena Kapulnik. It was and a golden we'll, radiant? Yes, golden radiant. Mm -hmm. Shiny that, golden, shiny golden, triangular. And we spoke to a, uh, another one, which was the second species. I'm blanking on that. We didn't speak to blue spheres yet. So whoever wants to come. You, did you talk to blue avians or? Yes, yes. For, yeah, we spoke to blue avians as well. Yes, to one of the blue avians. So who did you want to speak to exactly? Uh, whoever wants to answer our questions, because the previous ones were not very uh, forthcoming. They had trouble communicating. So if there is a communicator which is authorized to release some information to us, that would be wonderful. Okay, because, um, okay. They're not as easy to get a hold of. All right. They are. So whoever wants to speak. They, they're sort of um, picky. Okay, hold on. All right. Let me see if I can get a hold of anybody from, what's it called, the Blue? Blue Sphere Alliance. Previously, I wasn't much prepared because I uh, knew very little. I knew only what Wilcox said and um, uh, Corey. Did they give any good information last time? Barely, but it was at the beginning of the conversation. Okay. But uh, there was infor they gave tons of information to Ashayana Asher Diane, tons, several books. They gave information to Corey Good, and I studied Corey Good and Will Cock. Now I read a bit of Ashayana Asher Diane, so I'm more prepared. Oh. I more understand who they are. All right, Blue Sphere Alliance. Mm -hmm. Somebody that has historical knowledge and some information that is allowed to be published, some information that they want to get out, perhaps. Someone that will not be afraid to speak clearly and profoundly. Okay, I will see who comes. Okay.
you've connected with central information. Hi, yes. What is the question? Um, let's start with the first question, which is essential for my book. I'm writing the book and um, the information from Blue Sphere Alliance changes the perspective a lot. So the main question is a story about f the fall of the humanity and return to the higher dimension. And when did this fall happen in our time? It's uh, the, the numbers very are very confusing. Some numbers say it's half a billion years ago. Another number is 23,000 years ago. What's, what's the true answer? The original fall of your peoples? Mm -hmm. Is this your question? Yes. Yes, there is some. One moment. They're checking out the connection. Many discrepancies about this in even our history. There was more than one fall for your humanity mm -hmm. because there was times when the population was removed from your planet and then returned and then removed again and then returned. Right. That's why there's discrimination discrepancies in your information? Uh, the downfall from the higher dimension to the lower dimension, when did it happen? That was very long ago. Very long ago. The estimated time, 416 million years ago. Thank you. So the Atlantis on this earth was already in the lower dimension? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Because that was one of the critical questions to understand. Um, and what was the role of Blue Sphere Alliance in that? Blue, Fear, Blue Alliance was not considered Blue Alliance at that time. It was called something different. There were different species that visited Atlantis but they were not in alliance at that time. Mm -hmm. At least not the ones that we know today. Mm -hmm. the, those that visited Atlantis were individual species that now are come to be known as the Blue Sphere Alliance. They were traders, they were communicators, they were, ah, uh, There is not a word that will describe exactly what their function was on the Atlantean culture. Mm -hmm. They had many different, one moment. Yes, their connection to the Atlantean culture included many different things, very diverse. So they could not have an actual title, but they did work with agriculture, mineral supplies, radiation, weaponry, crystals, and intelligence information. Would this be blue avians and golden radiance? Golden Radiance first, then Blue Avians. Blue Avians were very attached to Atlantis at one time and to the Egyptian culture. They so much liked it that they became part of it in some ways. Others did not like it as much and moved on after trade or whatever business they had with Atlantis. Uh, previously, I spoke to Oris, or a blue avian. Is it the same as Horus from Egyptian, an Egyptian god? Yes. Thank you. Or wasn't it blue, was it blue avian or golden radiant? I'm I'm confused. Blue avian. Thank you. Um. Thank you. Um. And who I'm speaking to now? 
You are talking to the Information Center. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so when uh, the fall from the higher dimension happened, is it right that the previous planet was called Tara, the higher dimensional Tara? Tara. Taraha, yes. <laughs> I was thinking Taraha would be the future and the past would be Tara. Is it right? What would be the difference between the next section and the past? Similarities are occurring. They will take the same name. Oh, oh so it was Taraha. Correct. Thank you. And is it right that Taraha, when it fell, it divided into Earth and other planets? of different locations? No. It divided itself from the third dimension, but it did not create other worlds. You said divided from third dimension? It fell, I think it fall, fell from the fourth dimension, it did it? Correct. It divided itself from the third dimension. As it fell, the third dimension was a what was left of it. Thank you, all right. So is it right that all planets of the solar system are descendants of Teraha? Correct. Aha. Uh -huh. And also the planets in uh, Pleiades and Andromeda? Third dimension, as it is, was the default the falling of another dimension. Mm -hmm. So now third dimension appears and multiplies in its own way. Mm -hmm. But it was born of fourth dimension as fifth dimension was the father or mother of fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. So basically my question is, so the Earth is not the only descendant of Teraha, there were other copies of the Earth, like sister planets of Earth. Correct. Which also had humans, right? Correct. So is Erra uh, in Pleiades the, also a sister of Earth and fell from uh, Teraha? Erra is unique in some ways because it is still fourth dimensional. Uh -huh. It did not fall, but it was a fallen portion from another dimension, but it is not fall fallen from Terra Ha. Okay. Uh, my next question is, thank you. My next question is, uh, the humans, did we originate from, from which dimension did we originate? Did we, what we created in fourth dimension or the third dimension? It would appear that according to your histories that you did not fall in from dimensions but worked up from lower dimensions to higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. However, since there is no beginning and no end, it it is just part of the circle. Ah, so you think we started from third, went to the fourth, then fell from the fourth to third, and then we are rising back to fourth, is it right? Yes. These things happen all the time. Kalar, Kalar Kares, stars collapse upon themselves creating black holes. Black holes build so much energy and density, they eventually cannot hold their own density and become something else. Thank you. Um, so what, what was the connection between uh, Atlantean civilization on Earth and the civilization on Teraha. Was it also called Atlantis or was it something else? Teraha and Atlantis are different. 
They did not exist at the same time uh, as material one with another. Teraha was far previous. So there was no Atlantean civilization on Teraha? No. Was Only Lim in the reflection of, of Atlanta, you will find Teraha. Teraha was there when Atlantis was there. However, they were not interacting in any way. Ah. Was Lemurian civilization present on Teraha? No. Lemurians were also third dimensional at that time. What's the origin of the word Lemurians? Is it somehow related to Mu? 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 Yeah. It is related to uh, distant civilizations far removed. The Mu, the Murians were ancestries of Kashram Dieta, the ancients. And what was Mu? What was Mu? Yeah. yeah. Mu. In your history, the letter M in the Greek alphabet. Sufficient. Thank you. Um, were, um, were the blue heavens created as guardians of our dimensional transfer? The blue avians existed before you needed guardians. They assumed that position eventually when they saw that you were going to be attacked. Uh, who, who did attack? No one attacked. They assumed guardianship before this event. So what the reptilians, greys, insectoids, were all planning different strategies of how to exploit the minerals and properties from your planet. Oh, we're talking about they were, this. In, they were not working together, but in separate thought processes. However, when they realized that they were all thinking similar thoughts at similar times, they some of them united. So we are talking about the modern Earth. Yes. Thank you. Uh, what blue is the guardians of um, Teraha? The guardians of Teraha are in that particular dimension. They are not of our dimension. What's your dimension? Our dimension is between dimensional shifts. Therefore, we can exist in more than one dimension. So therefore, it is not considered our dimension. Uh-huh. Um. So what's the difference between uh, the blue heavens and the angels? Uh, angels are also interdimensional. The species is the blue avians. Angels were created in realms, and that is the difference. There is a different energy source as well for each of these two species. If you want to consider angels a species. Thank you. Uh, so blue blue avians are evolving, right? Blue alien. I did not hear that question. Are blue avians evolving like other species? Like other species, evolving, yes. And golden radiance as well. Yeah, yes, evolving. All and things that exist outside of spiritual realms evolve. And same relates to blue spheres, right? 
blue spheres are technologically not evolving. Oh, blue spheres are not sentient? They have sentience, but they do not have all the qualities of life. Oh, I see. So do they have DNA? There is evidence that they have DNA, but it is not evolved. I see. It well, was. Go ahead. It was interplaced. Okay. Who has developed blue spheres? Who has what? Who has created and developed blue spheres? The blue avians have developed these spheres along with the help of the golden triangle realms, golden realms, whatever you want to speak of. In that, they can be called many things. Thank you. But they did these things together because they are of like mind. Um, now the ascension. Um, so we are coming back to the fourth dimension. You will return to Teraha eventually, but your ascension is not about changing of dimensions. It is about evolution at this point. Right. So at this point we are evolving and at some point in the future we will evolve to shift dimensionally, right? Yes. But you are not quite there yet. Uh, what is the range of estimated times? Because some people think it will happen in our lifetime. What do you think is the probability of that? Zero percentage. Thank you. What are necessary steps for the ascension? There are many steps. Your people are not ready for ascension. What's the, what's the key element which is missing? Inclusion. What kind of inclusion? Too many people are self-sufficient and not including anything else. All people must be included in the step to take it forward. Oh, so it's global unity and desire, global desire of ascension? It is not necessarily a desire, but it is a unity to understand that people are to be fair with one another and equal. This re revelation is spoken about, but is not practiced. Thank you. Um, in... Uh, Ashaya Dayan's writings, uh, she doesn't speak about dimension as much as uh, universe. As she says we are in universe number one and the ascension will bring us to the universe number two where Terra High is. is that it a is good... correct. She is correct. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. The universe is filled with all dimensions. Therefore, mm -hmm. when this, when you are one with the universe, you realize that you are part of all these dimensions and will move forward into the next one until you are able to understand the criteria for movement to the next dimension, you will stay in that particular one. So the second universe, does it also have dimensions from one, two, three, four, and up? Of course. It so is their, their third dimensional beings, would they be visible to us or they're in a different universe? So we're not. If you knew how to see them, you could. But you would have to be aware of where you are. 
and what you are looking at. Uh, Pete, you wanted to ask something. Yes. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me well? I hear you. Oh, okay. My question about, based on that subject of dimensions, is, is that if, say, for example, a civilization or a race were to have a same thoughts, would their thoughts and their imaginations would manifest a particular dimension that would be a probability or a possibility that it can manifest or be co-created in that sense? In this, in the realms of imagination, all things are possible. With the belief system, all things can be made and created as matter can be re-established with thought processes. If you knew the extent of molecular manipulation. Yes, it is possible, I am saying. But the obvious thing about this is, it is not probable until you move into the higher realms of dimension because you will need the understanding of all the physics of all and each dimension. Thank you. Um, I have another question. Um, it would be nice to speak to someone who is um, knowledgeable about these things. And I think Ashar, Ashayana Dayan would be uh, a very good um, helper. Can you pass uh, the, inf the invitation to her to to connect to us. I sent her an, uh, an email, but uh, I didn't get the answer. I think she is overwhelmed with emails. So is she you... in your realm? Yes. Does she exist on your planet? Yes. Is this a word? She is not accepting this communication. Okay. I'm called away. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, if you can invite um, Grindel, that would be great. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Grindel. Yeah, hold on. Ah. Yeah. yeah, I'm here. Hey, Grindel, how are you? What's new? Yeah, a lot of things are new, but a lot of things are older. Mm. <laughs> I'm working in... Israel right now and a lot of things are going on there so I have to stay put uh, for the most part in that area mm. I see what are you doing there what's the are you negotiating or political, political stuff political I have to get things moving there because of the way things are looking with your new guy there uh, president um, they're all up in arms about him you know because he's not really very supportive of them uh -huh. most of other presidents were mm -hmm. but this one's not so right. they're a little worried so what are you doing what's your purpose um, I can't tell you all that what I do but right. I can tell you that I'm helping things come together a little better. Excellent. 
Um, someone asked me to invite you to invite your comments on things happening now. Lots of things are happening. We are uh, really changed a lot of things. So no, not we changed. A lot of change. A lot of things changed for us. Yeah. How sh how should we deal with them? What's the expectation? Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? You have to live with it. That's what you're gonna have to do. Uh, but I uh, mean, you know, I. Uh, yeah, he's going to change a lot of things. You're going to, everybody is going to see it differently. So, so the question is how urgent the things are. I know, uh, you know, how much time we got? Should we drop everything and rush somewhere or we just kind of wait? Yeah, where are you going to go? They're going to find you no matter where you get to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you don't need to rush off right away, but uh, maybe in a year or so hmm. depending on if he if some of his things that he wants to do will actually come to pass which i don't think so but if they do there'll be a real possibility of war on your shores but let's hope not uh-huh what happens in uh with our alien uh, other species like is it are you, uh, did you hear about the grays should you yeah, trust yeah. trust that, that new development yeah. but the, you have to understand the extra aliens whatever you want to call them they don't care about your politics except for Greg Fickner mostly mm -hmm. uh, they care about what happens with your politics but in this case they don't care about who your president is they just care about what the world consensus is. Mm -hmm. That's all that aliens care about, is the world consensus, not just one country. Mm -hmm. But of course, yours is a big country, so they do care, but they don't think it's gonna make that much difference. They'll, they figure they're gonna sway them one day, somehow, so. So the first con contact is not coming, right? The open contact with the not at this second, no. How about the disclosure? Is disclosure coming? It seems like there disclosure are signs. Disclosure will be coming a lot sooner. Yeah, I I agree with that, and it needs to come for many many reasons. But we can't go into that for right now. Did you watch the movie uh, "The People of Earth"? People of Earth. The people of Earth. Yeah, people of Earth. No, I never saw it. Check it out. It's a TV series with very funny reptilians. It's a comedy. Uh, it's a cartoon? No, it's a play movie. There are humans that are dressed up as reptilians and uh, Nordic and uh, a gray. Yeah, oh, okay. The people of Earth, it's called. People of Earth. How old is this movie? 2016 and uh, it's a serious TV series and so now they have a second season coming. Check it out. Oh, where is it on? Uh, internet. Yeah. TBS or something. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. Yeah. All right. So, um, Blue Sphere Alliance, how serious are they? As a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> So it is positive or, or what? Yeah, they're a serious group. Yeah, don't mess with them. They have a, they have their criteria. They have their thought processes, and they are very positive. But they do things their way. You can't tell them what, what to do. <laughs> That's I that understand, right? So, um, are we ascending or what? Are they ascending? We, 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 like you know, yeah, some people you guys expect are ascending. They're not, they're not ascending, but they're protecting the ascension in from attacks from outside. They're trying to let it happen uh, more quickly so that it's that you guys can be more useful. How's right. that? So they say there is zero chance that in our lifetime we ascend, right? Is it right? That is probably correct. I mean, I don't know, but if they said that, that's probably right. <laughs> um, 
Corey Good and uh, Will Cock came up with a story about Blue Sphere Alliance and uh, Runaway Civilization. They say there are many millions people, humans, in Runaway Civilization. Is it right? What does that mean? Oh, like traders and military people all over the solar system and neighbor stars, humans from Earth. Our runaway civilizations? Our civilization, just our secret program stepped out of Earth and there are millions of people now there. Is it right? Not millions, no. Are you kidding? You would miss millions of people from your Earth if they were out there. But yeah, they're starting to procreate out there. Yeah, that's true. But there's not millions yet. How many then? Eh, probably 10,000. All right. But so you, would miss, you would miss some people when they, if they left the Earth, especially the ones that you're, they're talking about. The scientists and the space people and all that. If they were to disappear, you would know about it. What did what they do? Put clones in their place or something? You don't know, but they might have. But there is about 10,000 now because they've been up there quite a while. Mm -hmm. All right. So how important important are they? Millions, no. What? How important are they, this runaway civilization? Well, they could be important, but they're not important yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Agarthans, the people under Earth or inside in in other dimensions, the story goes that they are eager to help us. Is it right? Who is? Um, Agarthans? Yeah, there's a lot of different species that are willing and wanting to help. Some of them are doing better than others. But yeah, they want to help. I'm talking about humans. Humans from down there, from inside the Earth. Yeah, there's... Not that many humans inside the earth. There is some, but yes, everybody inside the earth wants to help the earth for their own particular personal and selfish reasons. But um, yes, they do want to help. There is, because they don't want to be wiped out and they think that uh, if they don't help the earth, uh, there's a good chance that they're going to not exist eventually that the earth's going to blow up or something. But anyway, yeah, they're wanting to help everybody on the earth for their own reasons, you know, their own. They don't want the earth to disappear, so they just want to help for their own selfish reasons. But that's okay, as long as they're helping. So what should we expect about the release of new technologies? Like free energy, free... Uh, everything like medical and uh, uh, telepathic there's coming there's tesla's brain is going to return so when that happens when tesla is reincarnated or whatever it's going to be like he's going to be able to let them know how to do all these things again because he has all that knowledge already we are talking about this year 2017 Nothing, yeah. Nothing yet? It's, a, it's coming soon. How about Russia? Anything new? Any news about Russia? Oh, yes. There's lots of news about Russia. But uh, they're, they're working to try to be a, the world's biggest power. That's why they want Trump in their back pocket. They want the two of those countries to work together to be the world domination <laughs> that of course yeah of yeah. course it's not going to work but that's what they want um, but then it'll be more you know um, in their favor <laughs> uh, finances do we, should we expect the collapse or is it delayed now it's delayed because of your president. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's funny because he's caused 
all, a lot of other nations to gird up their loins, so to speak, to, uh, to tighten everything up because they're afraid that he's going to uh, try to get to them somehow. So, because they know he's a financier and he's into, into uh, business, so they are not sure how good he is at that because they don't really know who he is yet. But so they're going to be very protective of their money so that finances right now will be a little tighter and a little more stable. All right. Thank you much. I got to go. Anything else interesting happening? No, nothing else? Yeah. Uh, not that I can talk about. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your help. All right. Nice to chat with you. Yeah, yeah. Talk to you later. Alligator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yay, yay. Hey. How are you doing? I'm wonderful, thank you. We had a fun time with this with the other Grindel. Watch, other being with Grindle. Oh good. <laughs> it was more like he actually wanted to say the joke. As if he said that what was the the how was the how was the with the relationship or how strong is their willingness for it with the Blue Sphere Alliance? He said, mm -hmm. it's like a heart attack. Oh, how serious are they? Yeah, how serious, how are, serious they? are they? How serious are they? I was laughing. I was like, what? I was like, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like wanting to laugh so hard. I was like, oh, I got to hold in. Um, right. I guess, Jim, that's all I had. Uh, do you? Next Saturday, coming Saturday, what's that? Um, no, I'm not going to do it next Saturday. I have so much going on. So I will be off next Saturday. But I'll do, I'm doing it tomorrow. Uh huh. But I can't do it next Saturday. Okay. So. I cannot do it either. So I guess we are up to the um, channel panel. Okay. Yes, get somebody in there. I will stop the recording. Uh, so that will be published until this moment. Goodbye, everybody. Do you have any announcements? Um, join right. us on Facebook group, Hukula Facebook. All right. And um, I need helpers to transcribe. I'm finishing the book. There is some transcripts needed. And today's okay. who wants to transcribe today's transcript? That's the main question. Okay. And that's about that. That's it. And um, thank you for your donations. We get a little bit, but that little bit is, is a lot of fun. Thank you. Okay. I have another channel session at five, so I got to go. Okay.